Path Pilot Quick Tips, Robot Edition. Today, I want to talk to you a little bit about Python, which is the programming language that our robot uses for its robot programs. That's right. We use regular old Python to tell the robot to move from point A to point B, or to tell the robot to check the status of a digital input or a digital output. The programs that you load into PathPilot Robot Edition are Python programs. If you wanted to, you could load just about any Python program into the robot's UI and run it, although we find it more useful to run programs that actually cause the robot to do something. I want to show you quickly how flexible it is to have Python as your robot's programming language. And I'll, I'll use a couple of examples that are available publicly up on our shared robot programs GitHub repository. So if you've never been to GitHub, don't worry. It's a community resource that allows people to share code written by developers, by hobbyists, by enthusiasts. Typically, it's used for open source projects. And in this case, I'll take you to Tormach's uh, shared robot programs repository. So. We'll go to GitHub and we'll search Tormach Robot Example Programs. And this here, this is the repository. So if you're a software developer, you probably could skip most of this video. You'll know most of these tools. And I think just with the first few sentences, you understood what I'm getting at when I say Python is the robot's programming language. But if you're not a software developer, um, this is just a, it's a web-based collection of uh, example programs that Tormach employees or some Tormach customers have written. Uh, we hope that it will grow over time. We encourage our customers to share code that they've written to solve various problems. Um, but I just have a few examples here, uh, and I'm gonna pull a couple of them into this robot's um, file system, and we'll run them. First of all, what we'll do is we'll just download this entire code repository. We'll bring it over to the robot. Um, if you're a developer, you might want to clone the repository so you can keep it up to date. But if you're not a developer, I won't go into any of that stuff. All we'll do is we will download it. So I believe we can go here, download zip, right? We can open this with the default, which on Linux is called XArchiver. It's a lot like WinZip or any other zip extraction program you might use in Windows. We'll go ahead and open it. We can see all the files that are in here. We can go ahead and extract all these files if we want. Here's extract files. We'll choose the correct directory. What I'll want to do here is go to home, NC files, robot programs. That's where the robot is looking for any kind of files that are out there. And we can go ahead and extract, uh, extract all this code. Although you can see I've actually already done that before doing the video. So here we have example robot programs main already done. Let me close out of this. Let's go ahead and take a peek here in um, PyCharm. We'll take a look. Uh, example robot programs main. We've got some related to audio. Uh, this is from Joe Spanier, uh, an example photo booth that he did at a Maker Faire. We've got some examples that talk about various planners in ROS. Uh, and then I've got a text messaging example. Today, I think what we'll do is we'll go through real quick just a, a robot speech example. So here I'll, um, I'll pull this up. Uh, this is just regular vanilla Python. You can see that we've imported a library called robot speech. That's included here. It's pretty easy to do. All this is is pulling in the Google text-to-speech library and an MP3 player, and then it's going to go ahead and try to speak any string that we give it to it over here in the speech example. You can see that I've asked it to say hello. Let's go ahead and run this code real quick. Speech example. Hello. Pretty easy. If we wanted to change that, right, I could go in here and say, uh, I am a ZA6 robot. I'm not sure how it's going to like ZA6, not an English word. Maybe we should go ahead and say ZA6. Uh, we'll run it again. I am a 6 robot. 
So a little bit of fine tuning here, but what I did want to um, show with this example is just how easy it is to download a few lines of Python. There we go. To download a few lines of Python and do something extraordinary with um, an industrial robot. Uh, having a robot that talks may not be incredibly useful to you. I've actually found it fairly useful to me when I'm teaching very fine moves that involve a combination of inputs and outputs and small motions. Um, I find it nice to have the robot telling me what step in the process it is. And it speaks English and other languages too, thanks to Google's text-to-speech library. Um, the other example I want to go with uh, through today uh, on this video is something that I think is a bit more useful, which is text messaging. So also here um, in the example code that we downloaded, you can see here that there's a folder called text messaging. We have MMS example, that's if you were going to take a photo and send that photo through text, or SMS example, that's what I'm gonna go through today. We don't have a camera hooked up to the robot. So this is all done through a, a Python library called Twilio. Twilio is an online uh, text messaging provider. And you can sign up, you get free, you know, thousand text messages when you sign up with them for free. Uh, they're relatively inexpensive, seven cents a text after that first thousand. Um, and they'll give you um, uh, an authorization code, basically, that you have to insert into this program. When you download this program from GitHub, it's not going to work until you've inserted that code that you'd have to sign up for a Twilio account with. I've, of course, done that here, so I could show you very quickly. I've created a Twilio account. I've got my account SID. I've got my authorization token. I got a from phone number. And then all we had to do was copy that information here over into um, this code. It's just a handful of lines of code, as you can see. And then I've used my phone number here, which I hope you black out too so I don't get a bunch of phone calls <laughs> late at night. Um, and so this uh, piece of example code will um, go ahead. And in fact, this might be a nice thing to kind of go through here. This code will loop three times, and it'll send me a text message letting me how many times that loop has, has uh, what, what point in that loop we're at. So you see I create a little global function, a little global uh, object here, and I'm adding one to it every time. So it's gonna start out at zero, it's gonna be become one here, it'll send me a text message, and then it'll loop this again. And when it gets to the third time, it'll exit the program. So if you're not familiar with Python, don't panic. A lot of this stuff can just be done conversationally through the user interface. Um, if you're interested in learning Python, you should know it's one of the most popular, easy to program language, languages in the world. And there are more tutorials than you can possibly imagine out there to teach you how to write Python. If you already know Python, I think you've gotten an idea of just how flexible this robot that interprets regular Python can be. Let's go ahead and run the program and see what we get. So, SMS example, and I'll go ahead and run it. And see what, oh, there you go. And so there you can see, I guess the very first time is from when we were testing this out before the video. And the next few times here, program completed one times, two times, three times, which of course is exactly what we programmed it to do. So. That was just a very fast demonstration of how you might get the robot to send you a text message, but Python is such an easy programming language that it would be, be really easy for you to program your robot to complete a number of tasks and then to send you a notification that those tasks are done. Or easy for you to complete a number of tasks and if, it, if the robot realizes that it has failed to complete that task, to send you a notification that it needs some help. Um, I've shown a couple examples here that show uh, how easy it is to accomplish some interesting things in Python, but Python has a structure to it that makes it very easy to react to different situations. So it's much easier to write a complicated robot program with if, else if, conditionals, error checking conditions, all sorts of things that make 
um, process reliability a lot easier to program because you're using a modern object-oriented programming language like Python. So the fact that the robot can send me a text message, that's pretty cool. The fact that it can talk to me, that's pretty cool. The real power here is that Python makes it really easy to do complex things. Some of those complex things involve bringing in code from outside that other people have written. Some of those complex things just involve writing a complex program to react to uncertain conditions. Much harder to do in some of the proprietary programming languages used by other industrial robot manufacturers. It's my intent that we continue to add examples like this up to our GitHub repository. I really hope that our customers are interested in sharing what they do with the robot. If it's easy to share, I know we've got uh, one of our beta customers has been doing a lot of work in the machine tending space. He's got some great code that I think he'll be sharing up on this repo. Um, I think this could be extraordinarily powerful for people that have tasks that require a robot to do manipulation, but also to interact with the outside world. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it informative. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs>